I work for the MPS team. I'm part of so what MPS actually is. It's the name of the team, and it's also the name of the platform. It stands for Managed Platform Services, and it's basically um, a development platform that largely consists of AWS services and some additional functionality that we added on top. And then basically, this is the runtime um, that we hand out to people like Yan to build cool customer-facing applications on top. Um, and it's basically configuring AWS so they can use it, and also, yeah, as I said, add in collaboration tools and development tools. So I'm trying to make this the fun way, uh, because it sounds very boring, but uh, we'll see. So um, first of all, let me show you our world. Well, it looks like this, and now you might say, yeah, Daniel, I know. We are somewhere on that blue ball, and this is where the light comes from. This is where they play the Doom video games. <laughs> um, so, but in, for our world, it, more, it looks more like this. So the big one is AWS, uh, and then everything sort of revolves around it. And we have like some um, applications, like this is secrets management, this is a distributed build system, this is a chat solution, that we need to sort of supply on top. Um, okay, why am I showing you this? Um, I want to talk about a product that we sort of launched on, on, on this platform, because it's, it can be a hassle to get our users into all of these worlds. So we built Bifrest, which um, if you're familiar with the Avengers movies or Norse mythology, it's, uh, it's a rainbow bridge that connects worlds. And uh, I think Alex came up with the, with the name. We, we sort of liked it. And then Anke, who was here, I think most of you have met her, designed that logo. And uh, we kind of stick with this. So it's kind of like um, a gateway into the MPS platform that we hand out to all of our engineers and they can build cool stuff with it. So, what is Bifrest? It's, uh, well, it, it is just an identity provider that um, basically does this, identity federation. So, identity federation in brief is the concept of storing your user identity with one application but then being able to use it in another one. So, we try to store all of our EU identities centrally in Bifrest and then yeah, make them available in all the connected applications. So, the dark ages before federation, um, basically all of our engineers, all of our users had to keep um, like separate credentials for the AWS platform and for everything that we provide on top, like the other planets. Um, but then, inside the Rainbow Bridge, we installed this identity provider platform here and you'll notice straight away that there's only one key read. Um, so that's the single sign on, right? So MFA protected, um, a central self-service platform, which we then use to basically, yeah, with the two common protocols, OAuth, OIDC, we go into all the various other applications that we deploy, and then to get into AWS, we use SAML2. That's great. So uh, we can centrally uh, manage all of our users in one place. If somebody leaves the EU, we can just like suspend that account. If somebody comes in, it's just like one user identity. Great. Um, how does this all work on the command line? Well, uh, it's kind of a hassle to do this with AWS. If you have uh, an identity provider installed in the middle, you need something to um, sort of retrieve STS credentials, which are temporary credentials that uh, get you your access into the AWS cloud. So this man, who couldn't be here today, but is on the platform team, built this uh, cool tool, it's called Simul to AWS Auto, we open sourced it, you can check it out on GitHub. Um, I think everybody in the EU is familiar with it by now, and uh, yeah, that's how you get in there. Um, some other aspects about this entire platform, I want to talk about deployment and automation, and we like to coin something that we call everything is code. So we store all of our application code, all of the definitions, all the, 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 the application code, the dockerizing, uh, the, the container code, everything inside of Git. Um, there's multiple languages involved. We really like these old school make files, so they're always there. Um, the reason for that is that once we eventually merge pull requests to the master in Git, we can call something like make magic. And then most of our, our make files really they use an open source tool called Scepter, which is sort of a driver for CloudFormation. So, um, yeah, CloudFormation can be a bit fiddly on the command line. So this one sort of um, 
connect multiple stacks together and can dynamically manage our configuration into it. And then, party. <laughs> so, typically there's just one call in these make files, like make all, make magic, or make something fantastic. And um, it will deploy absolutely everything until we have a running application uh, with build pipelines, with um, SSL termination, DNS routes, everything. Um, so how does this work? Um, we absolutely love automation. I think Jan also talked about it. And we can't probably thought of keep saying this. If you find yourself doing something, for the second time you should have automated it in the first place. Okay. Um, so we really, really love automation. And uh, also the deployment process is, is a, a sort of like a DevOps dream, really. Um, so as I said, Concourse is the, is the build system that we're using. And once we, we merge a pull request to master, we've got these, all these other steps kicking off. So, yeah, testing, linting, we've got some containers that are being built. Um, we deploy all of it to three different pre-prod environments, like a testing environment, an integration, pre-prod. And then the red lines, they're sort of uh, manual steps in which you say like, okay, I like this. Um, all the three steps in front of it, they go green. And I'd like to start a production canary deployment. So we'd spin up some additional instances and then see if those tests are all good. And then finally, somebody with a bigger hat on and more money on his paycheck can then say, okay, I'm going to deploy this. Um, yep. So um, I wanted to have something visual too, <laughs> something uh, maybe for all of you to look at and laugh at. So um, I'm going to show you some screenshots that I have collected over time that basically show the theming of this uh, self-service portal. So, bear with me. This is the vanilla image. So this is the, the open source product that we're using, and this is basically how it's being shipped. And we thought, nah, this is not really what we feel about it, and this is not very colorful, it's very depressing, to be honest. So, um, I came up with the second team that basically it has been on there, I think, for quite a long time. And we, we kind it to be truly awesome, and it's this. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, after a while, we thought, this might be a bit much. So, um, uh, again, Jan uh, designed the next, the third theme. And I believe he was going to some sort of a retro synthwave phase. It looks like this. <laughs> Very hot by Miami. Uh, you can see that now the, the login button is sort of like this laser grid here. So, oh, it's kind of cool. um, and then we, thought, we said that, oh shit, we need, we need professional help. We, um, <laughs> we, you are the we system. Actually, <laughs> we actually asked people about, like, hey, could you help us? People that know what they're doing. So, this is the current one. There's the, the logo at, top, at the top that I'm going to design for us, and then we have this, this backdrop. The entire design is not really done by somebody else, it's still our work, but at least we've got the backdrop and the logo. So that's a big step for us. And you can see some resemblance with the rainbow there. Um, yeah. uh, finally, I'd like to show you the team. So this is a, a daily that's gotten out of hand. I tried to with my amazing Photoshop skills, I tried to put the faces in there, like, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes.